So we will cover the pins to what is based on principles, the flexibility of principle based approach, the seven pins to principles. So why the principles are important? So pins to is designed so that it can be applied to any type of project, taking account of its scale, organization, geography, and culture. It is designed to contribute to the success of a project without burdening it bureaucracy. That means the process, the themes, the process and the product descriptions describe what should be done in general, not how. So principle principle is based rather than prescriptive. Prescriptive. The principles are universal so that they can applied in any project. We project self validating. That means it's going, it is uh, has been proven practice in many years and empowering because it gives the practitioners a method for added confidence. The pins to provide uh, principles for a framework of good practice of people involved in the project, and that, that has been taken. We take the lessons from successful as well as the failed projects. The seven pins to principles are the continued business justification, learn from experience, define rules and responsibilities, manage by stages, manage by exception, focus on products, and tailor to suit the project. So we, we will uh, go through a high level for each of the principle. First, we go to the continued business justification. The principle requires that all for all projects, there is a justifiable reason for starting the project. So you must have some justification why you have initiated the project, and that justification is recorded and approved. So justification remains valid and throughout the life of the project. In most organizations, the business justification is easily documented in the form of some business case. Some organization may use the business plans or the similar as the business justification in the early stage of the project. So does business justification drives uh, decision making to ensure that the project remains aligned with the benefits being sought and the continue to, to the contribute to the business objective. That means if you uh, let's say that you have initiated a project that you want to build some system. That means that your sales will be uh, improved, uh, sales will be increased. So that is the, some just, just business justification. That means after the project is uh, implemented, you will get the sales uh, output like 10%. So that and that's why you need some uh, business justification and business relation. That means the benefit relation. That means after the project is being implemented, so you must have some uh, business implication. That means otherwise the, uh, the after the project the life cycle will be hampered. So justification should be remain, and it is important that that is evolving. The justification remain consistent. Next important part uh, principle is learn from experience. So learning from experience takes place for the prince too. When starting a project, previous or similar project should be reviewed to see if the lessons can be applied. As the project progress, project is moving. The project should continue to learn. A lesson should be included in the relevant report and reviews. As the project closes, the project should pass some lessons. Uh, any change is there so that it can be applied in the other projects as well. And the third principle is defined roles and responsibilities. If you see that every principle, you see the key message here. A key message that a principal project has defined agreed roles and responsibilities within an organizational structure as the business user and supply stakeholder interest. So project involve people and no amount of scheduling or control will help if the wrong people are involved. So you must have right people in the right time and right, right shape, right place. So the project to be successful, you must have project management team structure consists of the agreed roles and responsibility for the people involved in the project. All project have the following primary stakeholder. There are three parts. One is business. Who sponsors who endorse the objective and ensure that the business investment provides value for money. Users uh, who after the project is completed will use the products to enable the organization to gain the expected benefits, what I mentioned earlier, and the suppliers who will provide the resources and expertise required by the project. And therefore, all three stakeholder interests needs to be represented effectively in the project management team. Two out of three is not enough. So if the project outweigh the benefit, the project will be seen as a failure. And then the uh, fourth principle is managed based stages. So 
the principal project is plan, monitor, and control management stage by management stage. The definition, if you see, the section of a project that the project manager is managing on behalf of the project board at any one time. At the end of the week, the project board will wish to review the project to date. The state of the project plan and next stage as well. So the choice of management stage depend on a number of factors, the, sum, uh, the size and uh, complexity of the project. Uh, in that case, uh, shorter management stage might be there for the simple project, but for complex project, the management stage might be more. A project have two management, at least two management stages. One is the initiation stage, and second is at least one further management stage. The more complex, more management stage will be required. So this is very important. Uh, the key message, the project board delegate the authority for day-to-day -day control of the management stage within an agreed tolerance to the project manager. Then the fifth principle is managed by exception. So every uh, principal project has different tolerances for each of the project objective. And we know uh, that from the previous session that there are the six performance indicator for every project, like cost, time, quality, scope, benefit, risk. So each of the cases, uh, let's say that cost, the degree of permission overspend or understand against an agreed budget, we must have some um, tolerances there. Let's say that your uh, budget against an agreed budget is uh, uh, $1,000, let's say just for simple example. So you must tolerate that uh, 1,000 plus minus 10%, like 100, 1,000, uh, 11, 1,100 or 900. So this is the authority so that for a, for any reason, the cost is, uh, you see that exceed the cost. So you must have go to the project board for uh, exception scenario to allow whether you can continue the project within this budget or they will allow your budget to be continued. Same thing like time. Uh, let's say that your management stage is for uh, two weeks. You see that before the end of the project, uh, progress of the project, you see the one mark extension is might be required. Uh, your tolerance is one week. So if you foresee that your tolerance uh, is exceeded, then you might, for the exception scenario, you must have uh, go to the uh, project board. Same thing like quality, the scope, benefits, uh, and risk, all have the agreed tolerance level. Then the uh, uh, next uh, principle is focus on products. So projects that focus on product, project needs to produce and generally for successful pro uh, project whose primary focus is the work activity. So for the this principle, you must have quality. That means uh, some definition which is there like product. So an input or output that is whatever tangible or intangible that can be described in advance, created and existed. So there are two types of products. One is management products and another is specialist products. So for the specific project, if you prepare that each of the management stages, there are several products are there. So these are actually a specialist product. But ma management product is, for example, uh, business case, business uh, benefit review plan. So these are actually uh, the management products. So we will discuss more later on when we review the other cases. Same thing. Uh, so the focus on products is ensure that project only carries out work that directly contributes to the delivery of the product. That is the project does no more work than it is to deliver its agreed products. And helps manage uncontrolled change so that uh, we need to uh, agree that uh, agreed the, uh, the products which will be delivered we, uh, would have some acceptable criteria we need to define. And the last uh, principle is tailored to suit the project. So principle is tailored to suit the project environment, size, complexity, importance, and team capability and risk. The value of principle is that it is universal project management method that can be applied to take account for the project environment. So the purpose of tailoring is to ensure that the project management method is appropriate for the project, which case by case, and project controls are appropriate to the project's scale complexity, team capability, 
and risk. So tailoring requires the project board and the project manager to take proactive choices and decision on how to will be applied. And based on the process, uh, the PID or project initial document should be tailored so that particular project which is uh, which can be involved. So the project knows, understand how the print is used and how to carry the responsibilities. So the, if the print is not tailored, it is unlikely that the project management effort and approach would be appropriate for the needs of the projects. So these seven principles we need to follow for the, uh, if we want to apply print to in any project. So thanks for uh, joining this session. We will cover more discussions or more sessions and other parts of the history topic later on. Thanks for being with us.